Facebook does not care. Instagram cares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody watching? Ten people. Ten people? Okay. Okay. Hi, Jody. Okay, so welcome to another week at Norvice Live on Facebook. Um, so before we get started, I was told to remind everybody, because Facebook likes to mess with the algorithms, to make sure to hit the like or the heart button. Um, Hopefully everybody can hit the like or the heart button without feeling guilty. I appreciate it. Um, make sure to share this on your own Facebook page, not group pages. They're still playing nice with the groups. So let's play it, put it on your own Facebook page. Um, I wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Hopefully Sandy Claus brought everybody what they wanted for Christmas. We're coming at you live from Lewiston, Idaho, where it's another cold, snowy, crappy day. Um, bum, bum, bum. I think that's pretty much all the housekeeping stuff. Hey, Sean. Hey, Bob, uh, Dave. Um, so today, I thought when I was coming up on the live, wanted to tie something a little different than what we normally do. I mean, I normally tie trout flies. But uh, I come across Bob Quigley's patterns. Um, there's not a lot of patterns out there by Bob Quigley. I think he tied more than what he's known for, but he kind of shared his patterns pretty openly. So there's a few. Um, he was born there in California, fishing to some of those uh, hard to catch trout there. And then he moved over to Oregon and Started catching fish over there on that on it. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. The uh, first fly that I want to tie for you is a Quigley Cripple. I know there's a lot of different cripple patterns out there. What I think about this one that's unique is uh, the tail and the body. So right now I have a Daiichi 1170 size 12. Any of these patterns can be tied in any size, any different color pattern cutters to match whatever uh, mayfly that you're gonna you're gonna tie. So the other thing is, in my opinion, every one of these patterns can also be tied on a Daiichi 1167. It's a clink camera hook. So. Let's get started. Switch me up. Now, did everybody see my nifty binoculars? Mm -hmm. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and use some 8 aught olive. And this is Semperfly thread. Let's get our thread started on our hook. Make sure we save enough room up front. First thing we're going to tie on is some small copper wire. I think the original pattern called for gold, but I think this copper looks better on this pattern. So just go ahead. Hi, Rocky. Bring that back to the cape of the hook. All right. And our next material, <clears throat> excuse me, is marabou. This is brown. You can use, like I said, green, whatever. It, uh, get rid of this junk at the bottom. We only want maybe six, 10 fibers. Peel them off. Wow. 
wet that down a little bit so it's a little easier to manage. And I want just tips of it. You don't want a big tail on this. A little wispy. Go ahead and break them off. And you want this about three quarters of the hook shank. So go ahead, pinch technique, bring that in, keep it on top. Two wraps, one wrap front, another wrap on top. Bump the camera, bring our thread back up. Uh, about the one quarter point. So a half hitch in there. We're just gonna hold this mare boot <clears throat> and we're gonna spin the vise and wrap that mare boot. You want it fuzzy like it is. Catch that. And Brittany's got this camera so close. Trap that down. I have a question. Do you find some of the semper fly thread a bit slippery, but it's very strong? Yes. Um, the nano silk, especially, is pretty slippery. Um, and with the nano silk, you, you've got to use wax, uh, just cobbler's wax for that. Yeah, was the broke. All right. So we're going to go through and we're going to wrap our wire through there. And I like to give it a couple at the end just to make sure it stays secure. Get that wrapped down. <laughs> Randy says, who taught you how to hold your scissors? Um, <laughs> actually, nobody did. That's just how I hold them. And then I've got a little brush. I'm going to brush out the marabou a little bit. Now, our next thing is going to be some um, super fine dubbing. Just got the super fine dubbing pack here. And to pull out some dark brown. You don't want a lot. So this is just going to be our thorax. Basically, all we're looking for is just a little bump. Right there. I've already cut and stacked because I didn't want the camera bouncing around. Deer hair. And I just dumped it all out. Okay. We'll try that again. That was so good and had it all prepared so that you didn't have to hear me bumping it. And I'm just using Nature Spirit or Hairline Compare Done Hair. Set this down. And you don't need a great big clump. That right there is fine. Get all the fuzzies and fluff and shorties out of here. Drop it in our stagger. Right. 
this again. Pull our hair out. And again, we want this, the tips, about three quarters of the length. One, two wraps. Let the flare. You want to hang on to that back part and bring it back just a little bit. Okay. Rocky says, can they get to use the neurobiotics at the Texas district? Well, we will also, we won't be at the Texas show. We were. Norvice, I think, is going to try to be there. Um, Britt and I will be at the West Idaho Fly Fishing Expo in Boise on the 7th and 8th. Be good. Give it a try. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. So now I have a size 12. This is a, it's a dark bar ginger half saddle. Okay. I'm gonna tie that feather in. And we're gonna pick this up. No, we don't wanna pick it up yet. Mm -mm -mm. And this could be a little difficult. We're going to start wrapping that hackle. You don't need much. Two, three wraps. That's plenty. I'm trying real hard not to bump the camera. Right in there, clip that out. Now we're gonna bring everything back. A few wraps right there behind the eye. Get our whip finish. Three. And this is our Quigley purple. Clean up a few little strays there. Question. Yep. How is it intended to float? Is this is intended to float <clears throat> with the rear end. The, the marabou is supposed to resemble a mayfly shuck. And then the brown body, what it's supposed to look like is a mayfly that's trying to escape the shuck. So when you dress it, you only want to dress the deer hair and the hackle, and you can come in and trim the hackle off close at the bottom. Like that. So that it will ride more flush in the water. And that way it resembles a cripple. The rear end will float flush in the film or just under the film and uh, the top part is supposed to look like the adult bug trying to get out of it the deer hair represents the wings from the mayfly how they're all crumpled up when they first come out of the shop any more questions on that one okay again make sure to Hit those hearts and likes. And if you don't already, make sure to subscribe to the Norvice website or YouTube page. Then you'll know when we're going live and all the good stuff on Norvice. If I can hold the hook. Okay.
The next one, this is a really cool, really cool pattern. And it's the first time I've tied it with a camera right there in front. So this will be really interesting. Again, I'm using the 1170 by Daiichi, or you can tie this one on the, on the clink camera. Uh, this one is called the Hackle Stacker. And this is more of the Bob Quigley style. <clears throat> That's more what he was known for was the style um, of this, this fly. He was also, I guess, pretty well known for using uh, emu and ostrich. So what we're gonna go do is we're gonna dress our hook. Let's go back to the back. I like the hackle stacker, but I, I, I kind of dig in the uh, <clears throat> film critic too. That's that's kind of a cool bug. So what I've got here is a medium done rooster hackle, and I've pulled some of the fiber straight. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pull off some here and line the tips up. See if we can hold on to it without dropping any. And this is going to be our tail slash shuck. And again, you want that about the length of the hook shank. And I'm going to go ahead and use some Hendrix and pink dubbing. Go ahead and throw a half hitch in there. And this is more along the lines of of the Quigley patterns. I think the the Quigley Cripple is the only one that I've ever seen that uses marabou for the body and the tail. Um, I know you have Renee Harrop's um, Last Chance and it has a... No, it uh, uses a, um, 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 Antron Shuck and some Duck uh, Mallard. We got that pulled apart. I think I've got two months here still. Lay that up big now. And broke my thread. That's twice today. He did that on purpose. He never breaks his thread. That's right. I never break my thread. Did that on purpose. I'm a professional. And of course, I got two months at time. things are going, I better throw a half inch in there. Okay, so here's the cool part and the hardest part about this fly. So what you want to do is you want to take your left index finger and you want to hold it up probably about three inches, make a loop, 
Then you want to make two loops. I'm going to come over again for a three. One more time for four. Then what you want to do is you want to pull that back towards the vise and you want to wrap those down. See how they kind of roll loose like that? Then the next thing we want to do is we want to take this one. I'm using the same done hackle that I used earlier. And I don't really think it matters one way or another, whether you have the dull side to the fly or towards you. I'm going to go ahead and tie the dull side towards the fly. Wrap that on there. Get. Okay, bring it right back to the base of that thread. We're going to go ahead and tie another half hitch. Drop our scissors. Not literally, figuratively. Hold that thread up. Put your right index finger in there. I'm gonna have to angle this. Tighten up my tension knob. I am gonna wrap it this way. Normally I do it straight up and down, but I can't with that camera in my way. And then we start wrapping that hackle around the four loops. And then we wanna measure, just bring it down and it's just to the very outside edge of the hook guy. That's where we want it. Then we start wrapping our hackle back down. Bump the camera. This is probably the most intimidating <clears throat> part of this fly. This way. It's hard to get it back over the bottom when it lay down. Tim's on. Better late than never, Tim. All right, then we're gonna lay that hackle over here on my side. Trying to get one more down at the bottom. He's packaging up all the orders over the whole way. Good deal. All right, now you can let that thread go. <clears throat> Come in and clip that off after we get it secured down. Do a little manicure work here. Strum that back. Half hitch. I'm gonna take some more this Hendrickson pink dubbing. What are you giggling about? Tim says he has to recover from spending a weekend with the Malibu. I can believe that. Them onions will run your ragged. If we can do it this time without breaking our thread. Loosen up our tension knob. Give her a spin. Said I did learn I want a drone in the worst way. Tim? <laughs> you end in both. Mm -hmm. Right? They're adding on to our detention center, and my boss has one. 
and he's been taking pictures when they were doing the outside with the drone. That is the coolest thing. Brittany said, no, 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 I can't have one. And then we went out camp and then the camp host had one, came over and showed her how it worked. I'm a little closer to getting one now. All right, so we've got our thorax on there. I'm gonna come over in front. Now we're gonna take our loop, lick our fingers just a bit, sweep all that hackle back to the back. You know, lay that thread. I don't know if you can see it, my fat fingers in the way, right there at the eye. Give her bob in a counterclockwise spin. So the thread goes back, drop it down right over top. Give it a couple of two, three turns, light turns. Pull that down. Oh, that would be fun. There you go. Keep telling Brittany I need one for business expense. She's trying to tell me we need another, instead of this PC, we need a MacBook instead. I'm okay with that too. So wrap it down behind it, get it secured down. Then we wanna pull that, them loops back, come back over top of it. Wanna make sure to secure that because if that comes out, there goes your whole fly. Reach over into our handy dandy Norvice toolbar. Get our whip finish tool. Four turn whip finish. The hardest part about the toolbar is learning to put the tools back. Once you do that, pretty good. All right, and that is our hackle stack. You can go through and give that a little trim. Now this bug will uh, can be fixed as an emerger. You just uh, fix the, the the hackle with floating. Can also look like a cripple. The can look like a dun, or you can come in and trip the, trim the middle out, and it'll look like a spinner. So I mean, this one pretty much has you covered on all all facets of the dry water mayfly. What size hook is that? Looks more like a steel hook. Though. It is a size 12. It's a Daiichi, excuse me. It's a Daiichi 1170, which is a dry fly. Okay. Yeah, it's, I'm using a size 12 so that you guys can see it normally. I tie these on a 14, 16, 18. Um, so like I said, you can adjust this to any size. I mean, you may want to use a 12 for a, oh, what, Western Brown, uh, mahogany, some of your bigger mayflies. Any more questions on that one? Very. I uh, I come across, I watched somebody else tie this not too long ago. And man, I just got turned on by that bug. Um, and I haven't seen, if you research these on YouTube and that, there's really not that many patterns out there. Um, the Quigley Cripple. I only found two patterns on that one, the uh, huh? videos, the hackle stacker. There's a few, but not many. Um, again, don't forget to hit the hearts or the like button. If you, if you feel so inclined, we would appreciate it. Help beat out old Mark Zuckberg at his algorithm game. And be sure to go through and like the Norvice um, Facebook page. That's where if you're looking to see what shows we're going to be at, 
It'll be posted there. Hmm. Anything else, my dear? No. Um, so like, Tim just sent 225 tool bars and clamps to the anodizer. 225 tool bars and clamps to the anodizer to get done. So we'll show season coming up. You can stop out and see the Norvice team at the these shows. There'll be show specials going on. Um, we were going to be at the East Idaho, no, West, West Idaho, East Idaho, and they canceled just last week. So we were going to do East and West, but uh, they canceled that out due to COVID related issues. Um, Boise is still on. So like I said, we will be at Boise on the 7th and 8th. And it kind of sounds like we may be doing Wasatch over in Sandy, Utah in April. Yes. Okay. So our last one is going to be the film critic. This is real similar to the Hackle Stacker, except for a couple little things. The hook I'm using for this one is a size 14 and it is an 1167 and it's a clink camera hook. I think pretty much all of these flies could be tied on a clink camera hook. Tim said we're a go for the Wasatch Show. We're a go for the Wasatch Show. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, these clean cameras, it's kind of, woo. they're not going to spin on like everything else does. Okay. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to use some blue ribbon improved micro Zelon. And this is in uh, tan. If you haven't used this stuff for shut material, you're missing out. So what I do is just pull out the micro Zelon has these little smaller hanks. And I will come here and equal the ends out. Bring this back up just a little bit. A couple of little loose wraps, pull that under. Then we'll go ahead. Wrap that down around the bend. Pretty good, pretty good little ways. Cut that off. And our next material is some Turkey Bayats and Marked Brown. And because we don't put anything like that in our mouth, because it's bad for you. I've got a puck that I put water and a <clears throat> sponge into, and I just put my biots in there to soak. If you ever go to a uh, place where they treat these and dye them and so on like that, you will never put another one in your mouth. They don't clean them too much before they process them. So, well, half hitch, bring our thread over to our thread post. We will grab hold of that turkey bayat. I prefer using turkey over goose because it is so much longer and easier. Wrap that up. I have that dark edge to the front, so we've got a nice little rib right there. Bring that up here to where it starts to flatten out on the top. So 
secure that. Reach in here and cut it off. Okay. Our next material, and this is some Semperfly poly yarn in cream. And you want probably a couple card lengths here. Says, cool looking hackle pliers. Thank you. Those are the yeah, they're the easy hackle pliers. So just I like to even the ends on this. You want to bring them together right there, the ends together. Wraps. Oh, putting materials in your mouth. Rocky said that maybe it'll give you special fishing power. Oh, no. I'm already full of enough of something. I don't need to put any more in my mouth. Yeah, a good friend of ours is, uh, he runs a uh, distribution center for fly tying materials. And they do some dyeing and stuff like that. And uh, he said, yeah, this stuff's not washed or anything too much before it's processed. So any of the dirt or anything like that, it's, uh, it's there. I mean, I know they have to clean it a little bit before they dye it, but then the dyeing process itself is kind of kind of nasty so again we're using i'm using that dark bar ginger this is another one you can use any size hook any material to match your own mayflies there get that lashed in good or come up here and do a half hitch Not crazy about that one. So we're going to do one more. Put our scissors down. Right. Strange for me because I usually don't tighten up my, my tension not too much. That's Brittany usually uses a lot of tension on there. I don't. I got that a little too too long, so I'm just gonna double it up on my finger. Again, we're wrapping this up. It's a lot easier when there's a camera. Right? A lot easier when there's not a camera in the way. And Colin again, Anderson. hi, Colin. And we're bringing this up to right about the edge of that hook eye again. Now we work our way back down. All right. Twist our finger out of there. Bring that hackle over on your side. Grab your thread. And lock that feather down. Pick up your scissors. Clip out the waist. Half hitch in there. And then we are going to use a dark green dubbing. 
This is for our thorax. Pull that apart a little bit. Loosen up our tension knob. Keep a hold there. Bring this down. Go ahead. Got a little dog laying there. Then pretty much just like we did on the hackle stacker. Sweep those feathers back. Give our bobbin a counterclockwise spin so it jumps back. Grabs that poly. Pull that poly down. Back. Make sure we've got that poly wrapped in good. Jim says badass. <laughs> and then clip that out. Grab our hand whip finish from our handy dandy toolbar. If you don't have a toolbar and you have a Norvice, why not? Yeah, that was. Yeah. And. With that poly, you can cut it short like I did, or the actual pattern leaves that longer, a little bit higher than the than the hackle. And again, this is on a um, clean camera hook, so your abdomen and tail are going to ride inside the the meniscus there. So you're going to want to do. Uh, dress with floating your hackle and your thorax and that poly if i had left it long i got excited and cut it off if you leave it a little long that'll help it float also and give you something a little bit better to see surprisingly the hackle stacker and the film critic are both real easy to see on the water when they're floating along um, and it works on some of those tougher trout. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns? Make sure you hit like, hearts. Um, subscribe to the Norvice Facebook page if you haven't already so that you can see when we're going live, what wheels and deals where Norvice has got going. Um, like I said, I know the show season, if you're going to be going to a show, that's going to be where you're going to find out where all your favorite Norvice superstars are going to be. Um, I heard rumor Tim may actually put in a presence at one or two of them. Um, now that he's getting around a little bit better. Uh, let's see. These videos will probably be posted 
uh, with the holidays, maybe not till Wednesday. Usually they're out there on Tuesday on the Norvice YouTube channel. There is another place you should go and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notified when we got new videos up. So not only do we post the lives there, but we also post the um, shorter pattern videos that Norvice puts out. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Rocky says we should come to the Texas show. <laughs> Uh, Tell me about it, Ralphie. <laughs> I, I, I know. Maybe, possibly, next year we'll show up out there in Texas. Do you get any snow out there in Texas right now? That may be a determining factor. It's snowing here, and it doesn't usually snow in this valley very much. We moved here from northern Michigan, and I despise snow anymore. I'm getting too old for that stuff. If nobody has any other questions or anything like that, I'm. Says it's 80 in Texas. No, I'm hating you right now. All my good fishing holes are under snow right now and freezing cold. Okay, as a good friend of mine says, I think I've showed you all I know how to do. Be sure to uh, follow uh, the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.